I've always put in the cap on now, and yeah, now it's, the branding. it's time to get real. Look at these lights. It's almost as if they're lighting up the way. Um, There's no lights. That's my natural. Is that your natural, my natural glow? Brilliant. Although brilliant. Look, at, look, at, look at that, though. Look at the bags on one side. You know I've got, like, terrible bags. It's wow. Genetic. Wow. And then the one side looks all right, but the other side looks terrible. I'm just checking if we're live. Um, let's have a little look. Hopefully everyone can hear yeah, us. Yeah, we've got okay. the General, Marky V. Good stuff, guys. Great to see you on, as always. Um, let's have a little look. Jimbo. Jimbo Blues. Jim's on here. Anyone, any any newbies do say hello, but any, Sinead, any of the regulars do comment. Um, just check if we're live. Obviously, we're live, Mona. We are. God, it's cozy in here. Dave, there's a lot of good air. I can feel the energy in here. That's that's the heat. <laughs> it's it, not it, quite it, as hot, it, hot as Morocco, though, right? We don't talk about Morocco. Okay. No, no we won't we'll talk about Morocco. Promise we won't talk about this one, all right? Yeah. Well, we can if we want to. I mean, it, it's going to come up, isn't it? Uh, potentially, especially if there's any questions around it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, great to see all the all the regulars on. Um, yeah, another Tuesday tune in, and and this week, you know, we as always we're, we're trying to change it up a bit. And I know we've talked about this, I think, mm. quite a few times over the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> another point, Dave. I can't. I've got my spectacles on. I can't you see can't it. read. Oh my god! I'm going to literally translate for Dave. But um, I can look on my phone. They're all telling you you should leave. Dave, what's going on? I, 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 I no, should... I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, Mark Heath, first live in ages. Great stuff, mate. Great to see you here. But yeah, when we were, you know, looking at a, a subject for this week, uh, last week was, was Earth Day on Friday 22nd. Yeah. And naturally, it kind of gave us a, a kind of an opportunity, really, to kind of look at, okay, um, you know, we're running trips again. You know, we've got physically a big impact in the countries we're operating and you know uh, which is which is amazing but obviously that that comes with a cost in some way um you know and especially when you when you do think about it and you know it does mean a lot to us because you know the short time we've been going to places like the pool you know we notice the difference in terms of uh, you know and other countries in terms of how much the environment can change even over the space yeah, of five six years it's, in, it's insane you know? um i was trekking in october 2019 with a guide yeah. uh, nima uh one of the old guard and he's been guiding um you know he was uh, actually part of the 96 uh, well awesome. he well he wasn't part of that expedition but he was there during that time you know the great, the, the great into thin air um storm um, and he was telling me that um, back behind when, us, actually. Yeah. when he started training in the and guiding and portraying yeah. in the mountains, that the glacier, the Kumbu, yeah. was sort of white like it is at base camp all the way down to Gorek Shep. Mad. And yeah, he yeah. said, so from 96 till now, at least, you can see that shrinkage. And you know, the part of the reason why the glacier looks like the surface yeah, of the moon yeah. is due to that climate change. It's the shrinking of the ice and then, and not being replenished. So yeah. just really what Joel said. Have you heard the news? Free range eggs are available again. Oh, I mean, they've let the eggs out now, have they? Um, that's good. That's good to know. Actually, I I, I did hear that in the news. Um, but nice one, Joel. Good Sorry, point. Have I been living under a rock? Sorry, mate. Yeah, they did go to. They weren't allowed to call them free range anymore. Well, they're not for reasons, you know, because they, yeah, yeah, they weren't actually. I like, did see a sign that said it. our hens are partially kept in. Doors okay. Recently, I don't think everyone. Join us it, next week for a Tuesday <laughs> tune-in on uh, on eggs, on on eggs and chickens. <laughs> that would be funny. But no, Dave, you're right. Yeah, talk, going back to what you said about Nima there, who was there in '96, and then you know, the short space of time that we've been going there. Yeah. There does there has been impact. You know, um, you know, it's it's far lower down, and I know that, you know, we all have seen numerous, you know, um, you know David Attenborough documentaries. Ooh. you know, <laughs> Richard Attenborough. No, it's David. David. It yeah, is. Oh, I, I knew I'd get you. Only yeah. <laughs> because I'm a fan of yeah, the other one. Exactly. I knew I'd get you. Every time someone says David Attenborough, I always go, Richard Attenborough. They go, oh, yeah, sorry. And then they get confused. <laughs> Typically, Dave, thanks, mate. Yeah, but no, it's like mate. numerous documentaries yeah. about you know the climate change and things that are happening. But anyway, with with us, you know, we do operate in, in very fragile environments when we go trekking. Um, you know, and it has made us think about, you know, our impact both in the UK and on trips. So, you know, we, we do like to think that we've tried to, to minimize that in some ways. I mean, you know, if you've been with us for any length of time, you know that we introduced the, the water filters, which is more about the plastic consumption um, in Nepal. Uh, we're trying to roll them out on all of our trips because, you know, even I mean, we were chatting just before this, like, you know, we were talking about, I mean, you know, just to be completely honest, when we we're over in Tupcal, um, you know, we the water filters aren't aren't actually um, out there at the moment. We, we're looking no. to to train and get everything out well, there. I think COVID has certainly slowed that down. It's the 
yeah, we went over there and part of when we yeah. go over that, you know, the, uh, we've said it before, perhaps yeah. not for a while, that one of the reasons why when we say we're launching a trip that it takes a little bit of time is because there are a lot of little components that we want to get yeah. in. So, so it's an Evertrek trip. Yeah. We could just launch a trip right off the bat and just, you know, use bottled water or use whatever. Yeah. But one of the things that we did notice in Morocco, is particularly on the Tupacal trip, is the, you know, finding like a natural water source that we can get access to, that yeah. we can use. Um, it is tricky over there. So it is actually a really big focus for, at the moment for us, isn't it? To try and yeah. find ways to get the filters over there to get to minimize those plastics. It's, it's on all trips. Yeah. Like not just, you know, we, we know we, we've had a huge impact in Nepal, which is amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, that is our largest, um, um, you know, number of trips that are run are in Nepal. But, um, you know, the others are catching up. And yeah, we want to make sure that they're kind of impact in those countries, you know, Morocco, Tanzania, you know, in South America are covered as well um and yeah we were out there and you know okay we used our filter bottles you know the the evertrek water to go ones um you know if you've for instance heard of uh, dave shanks um who's ceo of uh, water to go um, yeah. he joined us on our mountain malarkey podcast last year very interesting guy very cool story as well about why he did it but yeah using those is great but i know that everyone hasn't got those um, yeah, we were able to use them on the trip on the trek, uh, you know, because you, you every now and again you do get some water, you can you can fill up. But if you didn't have that, you'd have to buy bottled water. Yeah, and you know, some and some people did buy bottled water because you need the water at the end of the day. You know, if you don't have it, you know, it's going to cause you issues at altitude. So this is that balance, right, between okay, don't want to hurt the environment, but I've got to manage my health. Yeah, right? well, which is which is a, a difficult one. Well, talking about Dave Shanks, I mean, it's a great podcast. It's actually the yeah. you know, the Mate and Malaki podcast. Go back and have a listen if you haven't. He even talks about, it, and so um, Hugh James as well, one of the guys we yeah, had on. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, both environmentalists that have a passionate um, yeah. a passion for the outdoors, and they've always said that it's not about perfection. You can't, you yeah, know, yeah. snap that's, your that's yeah, you yeah. can't snap your fingers and immediately eliminate your usages of all sort of non recyclables yeah. and things like that. Or, but you can strive to do it wherever possible. Yeah. And Dave Shanks, one of the things I love about him. Is obviously his business water to go he's put a lot of science and effort into the design of the filters yeah but he even said i don't care if you use my bottle or someone else's as long as yeah. you're using one and that, that it's a great way to he, be isn't it? like that passion mm. breaks through his own marketing like he, yeah, yeah. you know and one of the things that i've noticed recently as well uh camelback have been talking about it a lot is that you can get one of the water purification filters that actually connect to the water bladder tube. See, they are awesome. I, yeah. I, I'd like to test some of those. I'd like to test one because knowing what water filters are like, generally you have to yeah. suck quite hard to get the water through. Yeah. So at altitude through that tube, it might be a bit of a bit difficult, but I'm guessing. I haven't tried it. Um, but I'm generally thinking I might get one because... Um, Has anyone used those, by the way? Any other trackers use those on trips? I'd be interested to know because they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're pretty new. Them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Camelback have brought them out where the filter actually connects. I believe it, uh, it connects... The tube together nice so the water comes from I'd the bladder i'd love to use that that'd be brilliant yeah, wouldn't it? out the yeah, bladder yeah. in the tube through hey, the filter Sean. and into your mouth <laughs> and i think apparently it makes it you know it's, it just means that wherever you fill in the bladder up wherever you fill in the water yeah. up, it's going through that filter so you can drink from anywhere and that's that's what we got to work towards i think and yeah you are right you know none of us are perfect but we can we can aim to do that at least minimize as much as we can the disruption that's being being caused in a way um you know but this is why we, we, we also, a, a kind of initiative that we, we started probably about two years ago was looking at some new, newer, less f uh, frequented routes. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll use Machu Picchu as an example because, you know, it's it's one that's quite current because we got our, our, some ever trekkers on there at the moment trekking to Machu Picchu. Yeah. I think they reached Machu Picchu yesterday, actually, and it was great. Uh, I think Heather was sharing some of her pictures, which were amazing, um, especially of the Tomakea route, which is a rarely, rarely visited route um that you know there's, there's lots of things that go into a decision in terms of where we go but part of it was this you know a big part of it was where can we go that's more remote that's different to going where the crowds go yeah you know because especially somewhere like Machu Picchu which is like very popular you know how can you make it into one of those trips that are actually a bit more remote you know and, and, and okay you're limited sometimes by your geography because you know um you know the world is discovered now isn't it there's lots of places that aren't remote because people live there but actually in these places, like especially in South America, um, you know, in certain parts of the world, you can get remote quite quickly. Yeah, very. You know, I, I suppose we can even do it in Wales, well, but it, like this this route though is like, is great. Well, one of the great things that it, that it does and finding mm. these new routes does is yeah. that 
particularly with you know the Inca Trail. It's very congested. There's a lot of human traffic through that area. So naturally, where you the, the more humans you put in a single area, the more effect that will have on the environment. By finding these alternative routes and almost sharing the load, although we don't want too many people to go to our route, but you know, but, but our guys <laughs> are going Eventually, to it. But yeah, yeah. yeah, but our, you know, it it does lessen the human impact in a, yeah, in yeah. in one area, um, and enables the you know the difficulty in looking after all the recyclables and dealing yeah. with the human rubbish and waste is made much easier in one area. So wherever you go, it's all much cleaner. Our guys go on the um, yeah our route by the Hidden Valley, and what's yeah. amazing is that one of them posted a little um, oh, image really? saying that they were we go almost counterclockwise yeah. to the normal guys, and they came across some people heading to Machu Picchu, but our guys were going the other way because once they hit the, the big trail, the Inca Trail, yeah, right there, people like almost saying, like, oh, never mind, you turn around, yeah, oh, no. you to, and they're like, no, 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 <laughs> we're going another way, and they yeah, were like, yeah, yeah. there's another way, you know, and <laughs> that's great, and our yeah, yeah. and literally our guy said. You know, after about two days or whatever, was the first time they saw some people. other other yeah, people. Yeah, we're really That's proud cool. of that. <laughs> we're really proud of that because yeah, yeah. it does mean that you know where we're going. You know, we are like people are always going to go to these areas. Yeah. That's a given. So there's you've got to look at the best way that you can manage those people in that area whilst looking after the environment. And I think these new routes do do that. Yeah, and, and you know that's one way. And another thing, another question actually we came up with, you know, which was well, okay, but how how can we protect the areas? Or the more popular route so we still enjoy them right like you know everest base camp or kilimanjaro naturally they're really more popular um you know we're not talking like you know the, the trails on like the m25 but they're they're certainly you know they're not like uh, the queues on snowden or, or for example um you know it's not like that but you know there, there's obviously people on there so what can we do on those particular trips yeah. you know and i think certainly when it comes to you know we, we do try as an example we do try and have smaller groups you know if you get big big huge groups you know we, we've definitely had to be a little bit flexible with this because of covid but we do like to stagger our trips a little bit as much as we can that's one thing yeah i think another thing that we've we've, we've worked on doing um certainly is the local initiatives that are happening yeah. i think you know a lot of you have already been on on trips on here if there's any other trekkers who haven't in Nepal, they got the uh, was it the Carry Me Back campaign? Yeah, we actually, which is, is is really cool. We we posted a picture on Instagram yeah. where we talked about the Carry Me Back campaign, and I believe we actually used shown us back. Um, just a picture of Shona with a rucksack. And, Shona um, famous, <laughs> and, and yeah, with one on there, and I believe it's I believe it's her. Um, but um, yeah, it's a great it's a great initiative in the Kumbu, basically. Yeah. So all of the single use plastics and things like that are collected um and brought to namshi where they're packaged very neatly and lightly into these little things that you can clip to your rucksack yeah and they just ask people who are going to lukla you know to just yeah attach a few to your back when you get to lukla you can take them off and leave them and it just helps get all that rubbish down from the high kumbu to lukla yeah. where it can be taken out the mountains and dealt with um and yeah i think it's i think it's fascinating first time i, I saw the other it, day I, i've seen some pictures from it yeah, yeah it was it's, great it's fascinating i remember the first time i saw it and i was Walking up, and I just see these people, those like little, these silver pouches attached. And I was like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? So I stopped one. I was like, what's, what's yeah. all this? And they were like, oh, yeah, it's just rubbish. I was like, oh, okay. And then when I got to Namshi, there's this big area where you can do it. Yeah, so, yeah so they've changed it now because they, they've, they've clearly had a bit more support. And um, I think they've got actually the branded covers to it now to yeah. promote it. So they're really like, yeah, if you're trekking in the Kumbu region recently or, or in the future, you'll see that they've got the um, uh, this signs kind of more. It's, it's, it's blown up a little bit you know compared yeah. to what it used to be because it was quite a new thing now that you know it's great that everyone's getting involved now and i think that'll make a heck of a difference yeah you know because naturally where's where, where, where people go or people live there's going to be waste there's going to be rubbish um you know as, as like we talked about earlier we, you, there's only so much you can do and sometimes it comes down to education you know like i've been to some places you know and and sometimes uh I'm struggling to remember an exact example but I remember that, you know, I went to this one village and they had a campaign going on. Oh, what was it called? Was it at the top of, um, not Shangboche. What's the one with the, the, the airport? At the Shangboche. It is Shangboche. Above Namche. And they had this advertising thing going on. But then I walked about 100 yards and I saw there was some rubbish there. Yeah. And I thought, you know, which, which was clearly used by the locals. And I thought it comes down to the education. Like, OK, you're doing all of that to promote it. But I think you've got to educate the locals and get them on board yeah. with okay, what what more can we do instead of dumping it there? Yeah, and use that and basically get that 
into a different well, place, which is you know which is important as well. Yeah, well, you know, because you know, particularly with places like Namshi, it's yeah. a big, big, big village. You know, people oh. live there, you know, all year round, and certainly through the seasons. So there's a lot that goes up there that needs to come down. You yeah. look at all the bottles of water, the cans of coke, the Pringle tubs. It is like a modern little village. Um, and yeah, it is a big, big job to keep it clean. One thing I will say though, is that in yeah. my experience, I think that, you know, you hear those stories about, you know, Everest and you expect to go up yeah. there and see old fridge freezers and stuff like that. It's not like that at all. It's a bit it's different. Like, it? yeah, wherever you go where there are humans, unfortunately, you're going to see evidence of humans. Yeah. You're going to see a Snickers wrapper. I've just never, ever gone anywhere and not seen just something yeah. to tell me that someone else has been there. Um, but by no means is it a rubbish tip. By no means are you tripping over balls and things like that on the way there. So I yeah. think I think the work that they've done has, has really worked. One thing, and so difference. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Aside from the water and all yeah. the filters and things like that, you're a trekker. Yeah. What else is on your mind? What else are you thinking about? If you're environmentally conscious, you're going on a trip, what do you think? Yeah, about? I suppose the big one is is around the equipment, right? Yeah. Is absolutely. around yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's as if we got a list, Dave. Um, you know, but <laughs> no, no, no. I remember that one. I did. Um <laughs> no disposable equipment. Don't don't one. give away <laughs> hey, transparency is everything. Listen, listen, we don't want to give people the impression that these are in any way planned, now, right? <laughs> They're used to the off the cuff. I know, I suppose, I suppose they are, I suppose. Um but yeah, definitely when it comes to uh, equipment, you know, we I'm I mean I've done this myself. I've definitely, you know, had boots and then I thought, you know, and then they're not exactly fully, fully worn, and then I'll buy another pair of boots. And I'll buy another pair of boots, you know. I, I over the years I've I've kind of been like that. I kind of my mind's changed definitely in the last couple of years. And I think it has been a definite trend in people trying to either repair what they've got or try and be a little bit more frugal with it. You know, um, in terms of okay, can I repair this equipment and then reuse it rather than buying more? Yeah, you know, because that in it, in, it, in its in in way, I mean, Rab for instance, they're they're big on this, aren't they? Yeah, you I know, mean, even the packaging now and the way they do things, yeah. you know, they they package their stuff so it uses minimal package. Yeah, um, and all of their like when we were talking to um, sorry, I just got distracted by Sean Ratcliffe. He's in Namshi at the minute, having an is awesome he? time. Sean, how's it nice going, mate? One, Sean, buddy. Send Where me is it? Is he hotel. He's he in is in Everest Hotel in Namshi. Ah, awesome. nice. Enjoy. Post a picture in the comments of the views. Oh, Great awesome. to see how you're doing. Have some momos. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, uh, Hugh James was talking to us about you know the microplastics yeah. um, that are found, um, and I always assumed like what what is microplastics little bits of plastic no no it, yeah. it is literally like little microfibers that come off the clothes and things like that um so all of their clothes and things are designed with keeping that to a minimum one thing i actually found is really interesting as well i bought i bought some boxer shorts from step one recently yeah um and they come in little compostable packets okay so you open them up and you can compost the packets and stuff like that. that's really good so lots of brands you know if you are environmentally conscious and we encourage you to, to do so yeah um do do things like that patagonia very big on their environmentalism um columbia i think are another big brand rab are another big brand so yeah, pretty patagonia, much the, yeah you know it, it's relatively yeah. easy now to buy to buy a kit that's going to keep you know mm. the planet happy as well as you um yeah it's certainly something that you know if it and again, we're never going to be perfect here, but if we can work towards it, you know, these small things will make a big difference. Um, what was it someone said to me before that uh, small hinges open big doors? And it's very true. Um, you know, we we do all these, we have these small things, but they can make a big difference, especially when added together. And I think, um, you know, certainly um, it's going to be definitely an impact if, you know, because you think the amount of people now we send out to Nepal, for instance, if we're having like five, 600 people a season. Yeah. You know, if we can, if, you know, and again, we don't want to say you have to do this. It's just great. And we encourage it because, you know, you, you go into these places and we want to have the, you know, minimize the impact. So then, you know, maybe your kids will go there in the future. Yeah. Um, maybe you'll bring your kids there in the future. Um, you know, maybe your friends who see you and get inspired and think, oh, I'd like to do that as well. And then they go there like two or three years down the line and it's still maybe close to what you had. Yeah. And I think they can see it how you saw it and they can enjoy it. And. I think yeah, I think it's our responsibility really to to kind of because we're we're going to these places and we're in in these amazing beautiful places. Let's do something about it. Yeah, you know, I think I think you know, and I, it definitely gave us an opportunity today to to talk about it again. Um, you know, after Earth Day, 
you know, we were thinking, okay, because there's loads of days, isn't it? I think it's Pancake Day, and then it's Valentine's Day, and you know, which okay, better than order a card. Um, there's always these days, but there's certain ones that kind of stand out. Mm, Pancake thought, Day is a good one. Pancake Day is a good one. Yeah. Val- yeah. Do you enjoy Valentine's Day as well? Uh, what does Kim? Uh, g- d- d- genuinely, I don't <laughs> really know when it is. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll set a reminder next Yeah, time. yeah. All right. <laughs> I have to with Jen. I have to remind myself. Um, but yeah, when it comes to um, these kind of days, this was a biggie for us. And we were like, right, let's do something then. Um, certainly. Leah is a good point. What about your carbon footprint? Well, Leah, it's actually our next point, actually. Um, interesting, because, yeah, the, all the other things are great. And, you know, the when we're going to, uh, you know, these long, uh, long haul destinations, they are carbon intensive. Yeah. And, you know, we were looking at some stats. I think Shona mentions uh, Hugh James, who was on our podcast. And I know he's got the podcast with um, Killian Jordan, uh, obviously, uh, you know, very famous in in, in our circles. Um, and, yeah, basically talking about uh, the data uh, in terms of, okay, it, we're just talking about being carbon intensive. And what actually are, is the impact of, say, aviation? And it was quite interesting, actually, yeah. that um, the carbon emissions in the world uh, I believe it was like less than, was it less than 3% of the carbon emissions that actually are emitted are actually from aviation industry. And, you know, is 3%, we can still make a difference here. But then when they look closely at that 3%, they broke it down into, okay, in long haul and short haul, what's the difference? And actually 80% of that 3%, if you yeah. like, um, you know, was actually down to short haul flights because there were more of them, you know. And for instance, when they're measuring it, they, you know, and, and we still, you know, not saying long haul is good here. I'm just saying that sometimes, you know, we have to put it into context in terms of what it is. And uh, the actual benefits of going long haul means that you're spending longer on a trip. For instance, if you go to Everest Base Camp yeah. and you're on there for, say, three weeks, that's three weeks where you're not flying. But if you're going back and forth, say, Europe, uh, you know, two, three, four times, you know, then that is is worse than a long haul flight. Yeah. Uh, you know, when they calculated the actual emissions that were, they were actually yeah, so, produced. So it's quite interesting, though, just looking well, at so that, you know? adventure travelers yeah. going on one big trip a year. Yeah. Do less harm to the environment than if you take two holidays a year to Spain or yeah, three it's holidays quite interesting, a year. Isn't it? So it is very interesting. It, and obviously, yeah. one, one thing that, you know, we, we're, in, we're in the travel business. Mm. So excluding travel is not an option, really. So, yeah. our, so what we need to do is find the yeah. best way to look after the planet whilst you know doing what we do which is yeah. adventure travel one of the things we do as well and actually we've got them coming up on a podcast rel- relatively soon because it's it is the earth on yeah, yeah, yeah because have. we are aware of the contradiction you know that we want to yeah. look after the environment but yet we encourage travel so there is an inherent contradiction but by hooking up with people mossy earth we're going to get those guys on a podcast about planting new trees and also you know encouraging yeah. like rewilding projects but that's the one thing that's important when people say about planting trees well it has to be new trees because yeah. i've read about a few things that what they do is the uk government that names this right yeah, where yeah. they were going to plant something some insane number of trees um by the year 2030 or something which yeah. it, it's like it's it, it's like a million trees a month or something right but actually in order to meet that quote what they realized is well, well actually i'll just get some trees from scandinavia right but that doesn't increase the number of trees mm. That just moves them from Scandinavia to the UK. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah, so and the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it, yeah, but it, so yeah. like the, a lot of the time, people don't see this as like a global issue. Yeah. And one of the things they do as well is they bring up they bring things like diseases that kill the native trees. So yeah, it's not an ideal scenario. So hooking up with people like Mossy Earth that are actually passionate, knowledgeable about the science of these things. Yeah, um, and we do as much offsetting with those guys as we can yeah and we're, and we're increasing it as well you know because um and again we've got to catch up with them and we're going to record that interview um put it on our podcast um uh, i think his name's david actually he, he's um i think he's the uh, md of mossy earth and yeah it's it's he's you know clearly they do a lot of different projects and you know we've been supporting them for a couple of years now but you know they're supporting them they're supporting them you obviously want to scale that up and make an impact you know and if we can you know it's got to be obviously balanced because you know, I, I suppose, you know, to be honest with you, obviously, we are a business, not a charity. We want to find that balance between, OK, uh, when a customer books, you know, we plant, say, X amount of trees. How far can we go with that before? It, it obviously, it costs us crazy amount of money and we're more or less charity. Yeah. You know, so we want to find that balance. But we, you know, again, just to 
you know you guys have joined us every week you know you've probably known us for a while now you know we, we always like i always think it's nice to make commitments to people who um who you're regularly with and your audience and, and we're big on that you know if we're making commitments to each other and the commitment from us is a big one when it comes to the environment that we will be expanding that those rewilding projects for mossy earth so i'm really excited for that yeah I'm really excited yeah and that and that's really important because mm -hmm. Um, I just saw someone's comment there that there's no point planting another fir tree in a forest. It's about biodiversity mm -hmm. and creating more of that rewilding. So taking areas that are not currently, yeah. um, you know, and yeah. they don't have a, a, a wide biodiversity in them. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know what I'm getting at. Like, you know, so it, it encourages yeah, yeah. like bees and pollinators and things like that. Um, you know, and it, it really does help like, you know, make the earth healthier which is what these guys do, which is great. One of the things I just saw um, Shona mentioned as well is, mm. <laughs> you know, going on these treks, okay, it does involve some travel, but lots of holidays involve travel. Yeah, There's yeah. no way we can avoid causing a carbon footprint, you know, in the modern age yeah. for most people anyway. Um, but actually walking for 11 days. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good way. It's yeah. very, very, very small carbon footprint. Yeah, yeah. Where, for instance, you know, if you go to, say, Disneyland, and there's mm. a lot of driving involved and a lot of stuff not you know i love disneyland it's great but you know it's a more you know just as an example it's more carbon intensive than perhaps trekking in the himalaya would be um <laughs> sorry i had to i had to um, look at some of the comments andrew scott no save water drink beer love it yeah i'm with you there andrew i am with you all the way but no it's um it's certainly i mean you know talking all about this is great like it's it's sparking different things um you know there's one thing here and you know because there's a few comments on uh, other things that we can do and the one thing i'm conscious of especially when it comes to to things like planting trees and rewilding you know and, and you know we're not experts in that um this is why we support you know businesses and, and um, social enterprises like mossy earth um you know there, there's obviously a lot of um other companies like ecology is another one uh, or ecology i think they're called i don't know how it's pronounced but they are the experts and they're you know that their their specialism is how to manage those environments, whether that's planting a tree, because like um, I think Andy mentioned with Norton Jones, you know, there's no point planting a tree there in a forest if it needs the biodiversity. So they actually do that. Like if, if they're okay, right, do we integrate new species into, into, into this environment to to improve it rather than planting trees? You know, it's not just about planting trees yeah. for planting trees sake. Um, it's actually, how do we look at it in a holistic point of view, take it all in and think, okay, how do we, manage this environment to get the best out of it um instead of thinking just plant the tree yeah so yeah but I, I i that's why we get these specialists in you know obviously us specialists in trekking high altitude trekking that's what we're good at we're, we're trying to educate ourselves with all this stuff because you know we're well, yeah and we're trying yeah. to you know none of us have got degrees or things like this we've got interests in it and we want to educate ourselves but it's good then to, to reach out to these experts and say okay well Tell us how much how, how we can help you around more in this area. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, everything I learn, I'm parroting from you know yeah. what other people have told me. You know, um, <clears throat> but it is fascinating, and I, I do think I'm just looking at some of the comments here. I just saw a Lord of the Rings. I knew one. you see that even without glasses. I'm, oh yeah, so um, <laughs> yeah, so I've seen that. I can see I, L O T R has got its own sort of shape. Those collection of letters that I recognise. Yeah, I've seen those Conqueror challenges. They look pretty. The they medals, look the medals really, look awesome. They do look amazing. Yeah, though. the medals are really yeah. great. Um, and conqueror challenges they they you know they they've, they've come big during during lockdown obviously during the pandemic because of um you know the all the virtual challenges that they're able to do and they're a brilliant company and one of the things they are good at is that they they've also jumped on the um you know the bandwagon with regards to, to, to sustainability um you know plastic reduction you know carbon offsetting and things so yeah no honestly that any company that's involved in that where yeah you know we're advocates for um because you know especially with them because they get they're getting people out they're getting people to enjoy it like sometimes you know what it's like if, if if you go for a hike on you know we're talking about our 10 mile we go on brecon it's, it's one that we kind of go on it's, it's not an advertised route we just made it up probably about several years ago but you know what if someone said have a challenge just to make it a bit more interesting there was a virtual challenge mm. and actually it was like you were trekking to mount doom on that 10 mile it makes it more interesting doesn't it yeah it makes it more engaged and i really like brands i did like feel Conquer like Challenges. that i felt like frodo in Mordor <laughs> when i was on tukkal recently um you know Brilliant. when I, I i felt like you go dave i can't carry the rucksack but i can carry you <laughs> wow yeah um uh, ramona's saying she wants to draw on our whiteboard uh, i'm sorry but you think you can do better than that <laughs> dave i i'm really pleased you know dave clearly is, is the best drawer out of all of us and uh, his leaf 
certain I reckon that needs to be that's pretty much like a Banksy I think I don't be able to rub it off now no I think you can get I think that's going to be Banksy level yeah of, of yeah I mean if anyone thinks they can do better they're more than welcome to come and try <laughs> You know, um, come to the Evertrek uh, HQ, mate. We'll uh, love to see you guys. Well, right, I think, I think we've, we've been sensible for quite a while now. Should we answer some of these questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Before we do, I, I just want to get this out there because we're talking about coming local, coming here. Um, uh, we've only got about, I think it's until it's bank holiday Monday. So next next Tuesday, let me just check the date. Up until the end of April, we're, we've got our, um, it's our early bit pricing with our training weekends. I know a lot of people already booked in already. We've got a really, really good group. Um, you know, there's still spaces left on that, and it's still um, 295, 295 pounds for that weekend up until the end of the month. So if anyone does want to jump on that, um, you know, do get yourself in before the end of the month. We are um, having to a little price increase um, after that. Um, yeah, Lauren, who's on the comments today, she's um, if you can post the link to the training weekend, that would be awesome. But yeah, yeah. questions, eh? Questions. Awesome. So the first question we've got is from Andrew Corran. I know that name. Andrew, how are you doing? Do you know why I know uh, that? Island Peak. Yep. Summit. Um, so <laughs> basically, he's arrived back. His head's still in the Himalayas. It never really <laughs> leaves you, to be honest with you. Um, but do you think, realistically, you'll be offering trips to the summit of Everest within the next five years, his ultimate dream? Oh, yes. It's, yeah. It's, 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 we will... We wanted to do it by now. Yeah. It's but, a, it's a, yeah. It is a guarantee that at some point we will be offering Everest as, as, a, yeah. as a trip. Um, we want to do it properly, and we don't want to do it flippantly. You know, we want to make sure that everything's in place mm. and that we have an operation that will stand out as one of the best at, at, at base camp. Mm. Um, next five years? Don't know. I'd like to think so. No, um, there's, there's certain plans behind the scenes that we we kind of, you know, we're not advertising uh, Everest summits now because it is a completely different industry. You know, I know it seems very close because we're we're doing other things in the area. But yeah, the Everest summits is a bit of a beast in its own right. I mean, a lot of our guides have actually guided and climbed and summited Everest. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if if any of you have been Bibek's on there, no? It's on an um, expedition currently. Bibek, yeah, you've got Nima, you've got you've got some, I think uh, Nawang, who guided um some of our Ever Trekkers at Mera Peak. I know he's summited Everest twice. You know, there's there's a there's a lot of experience there. And you know, we we certainly want to want to get into that uh, industry, but it is a a bit of a, a different ball game really to, to track in. So yeah, we we're hundred percent looking to do it, and you know, um we certainly don't want to do it cheap in terms of basic because we want to make sure that it's you know like anything it's managed danger mm. um and when you climb at everest you know obviously that the danger is more uh, is a higher chance of danger but we want to make it as managed as possible so you know we want to you know include like one-to-one -one ratios with guides you know we want to make sure that it's as good as we can be um you know we we like anyone you know we follow uh, companies like um yeah elite expert you know with nims <laughs> Dave doesn't know him. Um, no, 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 we've been I, following no, him. Yeah, they're, 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 they're actually run by a pretty good tracker. He's, he's um, all right, isn't he? Yeah, he's not I, bad, I, I, actually. I've he's heard got some experience. Yeah, no, I've heard he's, um, yeah, he's got some experience in the mountains as well. <laughs> so, yeah, he's um, yeah, very, very serious guy, I think, you know. Yeah, no, but he's great. Yeah, but obviously, when you get, you've got companies like Elite Expert, you've yeah. got companies that have been there a while, Him -X. like HimX, yeah. that have sort Karen of. Madison. Yeah, yeah that have, um, I always forget his name. Madison Mountaineering? No, no. Kenton Cool? No, the the. Austrian guy. Uh Furt and back. Furt and back. Furt and back you know, expeditions, yeah, um, yeah. You know, those guys really do set a high standard. Yeah. But one thing you've got to look at is are they the cheapest? No. Are they the most expensive? Yes. Yeah. Uh their base camps are something to behold. Yeah. Well look at NIMS. I mean, Jesus, and, obviously a lot more uh, you know, expensive. But then you've got to look at the difference <clears throat> between so if you look at the cheaper expeditions yeah. and you look at the more expensive expeditions. I will guarantee you there is a marked difference in the amount of people that come down off the mountain and the amount of ones that sadly get left on the mountain. Yeah. Um, so exactly. that's what it that's what it comes down to in all in you know is that is that is the more money you pay the wet better you look after the healthier yeah. you are the more success you have and success on Everest doesn't just mean getting up and down it means come, going back home. What does that Vista say? Yeah, getting to the summit is optional. optional. Getting down is mandatory. Love it. Exactly. So, you know, when it comes to safety. That, you know, we want to, you know, like we do on on our trekking and you know and, and some of our climbing expeditions, you know, on the trekking peaks, we want to make sure that safety is the most important thing. Yeah. Um. You know, above anything else. So yeah, definitely there will be. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. Please ignore. Oh my God. Uh, just looking block or payments to a certain company called Evertrek. Fine, Mona. Um, but no, I know you want to go on some trips, mate. Uh, look forward to, to having you on one of our trips. Um. Mm -hmm. 
but no it's a great question great question and uh, you know we could we could talk about that uh, for all day but well, honestly we're, we are big we're mountain geeks when it comes to following these expeditions like we've been yeah. following nims for a long time even before well very early on he started his 14 peaks thing we you know we um we've been following that for for some time yeah. and it's nice to see we him. knew him first <laughs> well, i don't want to say that now he's um well but, a new a couple of the guys over there have met him yeah they, they've, they've met and chat to him about certain business stuff but yeah he's uh he seems like a top bloke anyway um but you know actually you know, could be a pair of ours in the world so who knows yeah exactly maybe we'll have to uh, have a chat with him uh but no good question good question and yeah andrew andy definitely may hit us up drop us a message if you're really seriously thinking about it because i know it's on my it's on my agenda too um i'll be climbing it climbing it over the next few years um yeah i'll let you know how that goes shona um i'm guessing glacier shrinkage affects water supplies on the locals too in places like gorak Gorak Chef. Yeah, yeah, definitely does. Mm. To the point where Gorak Chef is one of the only places that um, we still need to use bottled water um, because the water source there is not freely available or clean and safe. The water that kind of does there has been melted in this one little sort of like pond area. You can't get it's it from the best, down the glacier. It? One it's time I saw a horse rolling in it. Um, you know, filtered water that's been rolled in by a horse is still rolled horse water. It, yeah, I and mean, you, you don't want rolled horse water. Even you can if test it filtered. out with the NASA filters. Yeah, that is true. I mean, but I've seen you mean oh, that video you made of drinking that water. It was horrendous. But yeah, no, it, it is. Fully it is, and that's a direct result of climate change. Um, yeah. And yeah, and there are some places that yeah, it is more noticeable than others. Gorek yeah. Shep and that area is definitely one of them. Yeah, and you know. It, it does make a, a, a further downstream is probably the biggest thing, isn't it? Because so many people rely on the Himalayas, um, you know, in terms of the, the water that comes off the glaciers there, because they're some of the biggest glaciers in the world. You know, you go you go down to India, for example, that like all that water goes south, doesn't it? Um, you know, you talk about Bangladesh, Bhutan, you know, you've got all these uh, countries on you know, around Nepal that, that really do, um, you know, need the, the they need the water. Um, <laughs> Jesus. So I'm just I'm just reading some of the comments. Oh God, I drink horse water all the time. What don't what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's Emily. I know. Yeah, she she's like that. Who also wants to climb Everest, by the way? She does. Yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> um yeah very you know she's she's mad. Brilliant. Ever climbers, I like that. Yeah, like Karen that. Bardet. She met Nims. Did she? Yeah. Bardet. Really? I believe she did. She did. I think they had a picture of them. I at, think um, Everest view. I think she's yeah she certainly um she certainly likes him. That's that's yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah go and you know we won't bother at all. <laughs> brilliant no yeah i would have done it as well <laughs> no brilliant I, no, I, no it, she's it a video really no karen Bardet didn't meet him oh no she's gonna tell you off in a minute. i know I do. <laughs> i'm deliberately trying to like provoke a reaction out of her brilliant brilliant uh, but yeah um and guys any any questions do drop them in i know we're we're talking about the environment today and you know um if we can save the planet one track at a time that's what we're going to do but any questions at all about equipment um you know anything about Mandel Bhutan's playing bingo yeah um if you anything at all do do sort of post them in the comments because we want to make sure we get those trekking questions answered yeah um I mean yeah who is it I, I, John was asking around favorite trekking peaks favorite trekking peaks yeah I don't, a bit of a random one yeah what in in, in the Himalaya or just, what, favorite or trekking just peaks, in yeah. general Penavan in, I reckon if we go, <laughs> if we're looking at our trips, which ones, which one, which um, one would you do next, for instance? Probably something like, I mean, there are givens, aren't there, like yeah. Island Peak, Mera Peak, and stuff like that, that are very, yeah. very popular. To be honest, Aconcagua. Really? I want to go to South America. Um, I want to do something big after my recent turnaround um so yeah i want to get myself into like a Smash good it. physical condition and aconcagua would probably be probably be my goal also you know highest mountain outside the himalaya it's got a nice ring to it yeah yeah i do like that it is now aconcagua is a huge one isn't it lobuche east though i was going to climb that with Vanuge. yeah you know, they, lobuche east is an option we're talking about a lot of the summit um you know the summits of everest uh people who are on the you know at everest base camp now waiting to summit they do a lot of their climatization on Lobuche. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, um, Bibak, Bibak, who's out there now, um, yeah. did it on Lobuche. It's because it's it's less congested than Island Peak. Yeah, um, but it's not far from Lobuche village, so you know you can walk there and get to Gorek Shep in a day. Yeah, um, so it's not that bad. But yeah, there's something like that. But I think probably if I was going to sign up 
put my money down today, yeah. I'd probably go to Aconcagua, South America. Even Simon Harwood, sign me up for the summit. We'll have included the £10 deposit promos. Yeah. You never know, Simon. You never know, mate, when they come along. Uh, but when they do come along, mate, most of them. <laughs> uh, was it Joel said, Dave, I need to snowboard down uh, Val Blanche at Sham. Um, I'll be honest, y yeah, but I can't really snowboard down anything right now. Do it. I mean, I got a little bit. I, I, I you got to Google that afterwards. There now, were some pictures, weren't there? You know, where I did it. Good pictures. Some good that, vid that video, well, that video where I stood and, and then I fell. I, I saw that video. But yeah. I, I, by the end of it, though, you 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 were smashed it. Yeah. I mean, what I don't like about snowboarding is that at any moment when you're learning, you'll catch that front edge and you'll be airborne. Yeah, that's fine. It's snow. It's soft. It's not soft. <laughs> I thought it was soft. Like my mind, you know, when you see, whenever someone posts a video about time yeah. in the snow, it's always fresh powder. It's soft. It's not what it's like if you ever <laughs> want to go skiing, by the way. It's white concrete. <laughs> like white if you concrete. land on a piece, you're going to, my tailbone yeah. is still sore. <laughs> That's yeah, what it is like. But my feet are still sore after Tupacal. Like, ah, we don't talk about Tupacal. You sure? Yeah, we don't. You want to talk about two count? No, it's fine. <laughs> that, was the, that was the week before last, right? That was really uh, brilliant. Um, yeah, just go for some of the comments as well. I'm still, uh, Joel's still crashing after 15 years. See, everyone does it. Yeah, I crash. I should have took up skiing. It's cooler. You should try skiing. I think you'd, you'd, yeah. you'd, you'd quite like skiing. I think it's actually cooler than snowboarding. I think that when Ooh. snowboarders see skiers, they're quite jealous of how cool they are. Isn't that right, Joel? <laughs> I'm just winding Joel up now. Right, well, is, is Joel, uh, Joel's a boarder, right? Yeah, he's a boarder. Yeah, he sent me an email with some uh, with some top tips. Mm, interesting. Um, yeah. Interesting. Neither of them stopped me from hurting my ass. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that you like to say ass? Uh, we can beat that out on the podcast. It's yeah, fine. yeah. You can see it just my beep. Um, Emily, I'm still humming and oaring. Island Peak or Mera, November 2023. Uh, my saying is uh, Amada Blam uses Island. Arunsi uses Mera. Yeah, it's. Uh, Emily, I mean, both are, are really cool. I mean, we've had summits on both in the last month. Um, you know, it just depends. I think, you know, out of those two, it, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could do both. Just throwing it out there. You know, um, I don't think they're like massively, massively busy. So I don't think that, um, you know, just because they are, you know, you they are used as climatization from from like, like Amma de Blam or Baruncy. Um, don't think they're going to be that busy. But, you know, it depends on the time of year as well. I mean, yeah, what are you looking at? November. I'd say Mera's quieter in November. It's cold. It's mm. very cold in November. So do take that into account. And obviously uh, Mera being, you know, just over 6,400 metres, it's going to be, you know, a little bit more colder. Whereas, um, you know, Island Peak in November, I'd say majority of the expeditions in Island Peak will be in the October, in the autumn. Just take that in mind. So it will be quieter in the November. So, yeah, do do sort of weigh up those before you go on there whatever you do though you can have an awesome time yeah um you know and yeah Baruncy, that's quite cool isn't yeah, it i know we, awesome. um, we're, we're kind of looking at that aren't we because it's, it's obviously quite high but we're again we're always looking at these new peaks we go back to what we talked about remote places that's quite a remote place on near Baruncy. yeah 100 percent um i just seen an interesting comment um uh, lee davy uh welcome he's from pang Lee, hey, lee. Awesome. i messaged you well done mate he was on our training weekend. Uh, it got, got, feels like an eternity ago now, Lee. Yeah. But, mate, fantastic. You made um, Everest Base Camp. Congratulations. Joshua O'Donnell says these two are Hell's Angels prospects. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Joshua O'Donnell. Oh, that's uh, Hell's Angels prospects. Yeah, we, we can we can do that. I think we've got to work on the beards first, uh, Joshua. Yeah. I do. Oh, I have a license. I can ride a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, I don't. You have to teach me, Dave. Yeah, I can teach you how to ride a motorcycle. I Why have not? ridden one um, abroad. Emily uh, Cuthill has 19 horses. 19. Why stop at 19? Yeah. So close to a nice rain number. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, 19 horses. I don't know. Where would you keep 19 horses in a field? I guess? In stables, huh? Yeah. Matt, like, yeah. <laughs> I like horses, but I, I never want to ride one ever again. Why? They're bigger than they look, man. You see them in the field. How all... many hands are they? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, nothing will beat the size of a camel. <laughs> Yeah, they are, the they are that hands. camel is huge. 19 horses, oh, Emily. Definitely sell a few, go and do some trips. You'll have an that awesome time. That feels sad, though. Or selling them. I know, yeah, yeah, especially if you're attached. Like, you know, it's yeah. like, I don't know. Are, are horses pets like you would, like a dog? Or are they more yeah. like like an own, like a, like an object you own, like a car? I don't know. I've never owned a horse. Uh, Emily, how do you feel about that? How do you feel if you had to sell some of your horses? So we've digressed. To do it. I know, we are going off, off piece yeah so we did that yeah yeah nice. um you know but it's all good i'm just just reading through some of the comments as well 
Um, who was it now? There was a guy. How many flights? Uh, yeah, serious question. South America. Uh, yeah, um, Ramona, when, when it comes to, uh, sorry, was that Mama? Yeah, it was. Yeah, with flights, I, definitely with, with going to South America, there are always, you, there's always at least one um, change. So, yeah, I think um, Andy might have actually put one in there already. Yeah, here we go. So he's gone. So he's gone UK to Schiphol, so Amsterdam, and then he's gone Buenos Aires, and then Mendoza. Yeah, this, when you go into, well, that's really vibrating. Why is that going I, I don't mad? know. It's a bit mad. Literally, I saw us literally. <laughs> I don't really know why. Weird. <laughs> I don't know why. Unless this was actually going for it. Um, but yeah, sorry. Where was I? Yeah. So when you when you go into South America, and especially not the capitals, you go into you know you know, you know another city. Uh, yeah, there are some changes, especially when you go into Aconcagua, because like I said, you have got to get down to Mendoza. Yeah. Um, as Andy has put there. So anywhere, like like same with going to Peru. Uh, if you go to Cusco, you've got to go via Lima. And to get to Lima, you've probably got to go via another, um, you know, some people go via Spain or the States. Um, I think you can get flights via Miami. Fancy a night in Miami. Um, yeah, then you can go to, to Peru. We've had yep. some customers do that. And I think some of our Yetis who are going later this year, uh, they're going to uh, Machu Picchu, and they're going via Miami to uh, Lima, then to Cusco. So, yeah, there's a few there. Um, not quite as easy to get to in terms of, um, you know, compared to like Nepal or Tanzania. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good. Um, I've traded for expensive, or even more expensive ones. Emily, 100%. But life's short, mate. Do it. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? Um, apparently, she breeds to sell. Oh, okay. oh, that's, so fair pets. that's fair enough. That's quite a cool, um, quite a cool little hobby you got going there, mate. That sounds awesome. Wow. That might be a full time job, to be fair. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just talking about evacuations, things like that. Actually, a question that came up um, with, what was it? It was around, just talking about evacuations, because yeah. I feel like it's important to talk with, about one here as well, is obviously when it comes to certain um, uh, evacuations in Nepal, and you know, there's been a fair few. There's, there's a lot of, um, not like, not, not dozens on the Evertrek trips, but there's been some that we've had to get people out there. And it's, it's obviously a lot easier to do mm. in Nepal because of the setup. But someone was asking before around like Kilimanjaro, Peru, what's the evacuation procedures on there? And, it, and it's it's very similar in terms of those countries, but it's very different to Nepal, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so yeah. Nepal yeah. Is, is so well established mm. and there's entire industries that have set up and they've gone through their, you know, their peaks and troughs, good yeah. and bad. But well, we've got it to a point now where you know we've got such good relationships with the with the helicopter companies, and there's so many of them going yeah. to that region um, for all sorts of different reasons that it's very easy for us to arrange one. With the other more remote ones, certainly it is does you know present more yeah. of a challenge. Certainly there's there's more overland evacuations and there are yeah. helicopters. It all depends. Like if it's critical, yeah, yeah, a helicopter is going to be going to be gotten, but it's a lot more expensive. So there's certainly a lot more overland evacuations and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's all essentially comes down as well to the guide. The guide is the first person you want to speak to. He's yeah. the person who's most trained on the scene to look after you. Um, and treating altitude sickness is normally very simple. You need to reduce your altitude by about a thousand meters. Yeah, as much as so, you can. Anyway, so yeah. that's probably our first thing that we're going to do outside of the, you know, in these other regions that are perhaps more remote. Um, one question we did get as well is, um, I think it came in twice recently. Okay. Was if you're in Nepal and you need a helicopter, yeah, but you've got no phone signal, you can't get hold of your insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens? Okay. Do you waste valuable time? And the answer to that is no. So we always put, you know, health and safety, life and limb above mm. anything else. Um, so we always it's a balancing act. You do need to yeah. call your insurance company and make the claim and get that done as soon as you can. But that won't delay us calling you the helicopter and at least get yeah. you down to Lukla so you can see a doctor, <clears throat> so you can reduce your altitude, and so you can get the attention you need. If that means flying you to Kathmandu, then we'll fly you to Kathmandu. Yeah, safety's first. Isn't yeah, it? We've, we've had that before. I know that I think Leah mentioned earlier on, actually, around world nomads, that they've put a bit of a caveat in their, in their insurance around that you must speak to them first before getting the helicopter. Um, you know, And there are some travel companies, um, sorry, that, some insurance companies that do have that but basically when the situation has arrived we've just got people down you know um it's if if you need to get down you need to get down you know there's, there's no point waiting 
um, just because of a process. We obviously got to balance it out between the legality of it yeah. and costs. But certainly, um, you know, if you can speak to them, great. And it's easier and it's done. Most of the time, it won't get to that point that is critical. Yeah. Because they'll you you'll be the guide will be noticing these things over a couple of days. So it was it's not like it's gonna be out of the blue, you know. Unless, you know, and, and, and this is why we always say be honest, be open with yeah. with your with your, your guides. Um, you know, don't don't kind of hide things from them. Yeah. I know you want to get to Everest Base Camp, but you've got to remember it's safety first. Yeah. Um or, you know, you want to get some at Killy, but safety first, guys. Um so do be open and honest with them about how you're feeling. Um, you know, you're gonna be fine. It's not like they're gonna say, Oh my god, you gotta be like, you've got to get out now. You know, you it, it, it's, it's over a couple of days. It doesn't just happen like a switch. Yeah. Um, you know, but if it in terms of the critical stuff. But before then, there's usually an opportunity to speak to your, your insurance company. Yeah. So yeah, just just take that in mind. Um, just sort of yeah, have that in your mind if, if anything happens. Although you can put it to the side, don't even have to think about it because you're going to get a base camp anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like Mark, <laughs> like Mark Beecroft. Hey, hi, Mark. Uh, base camp yesterday, yesterday, I believe. Yeah, we, um, I think it was with Lee. I think. Um, I think they might be in the same group, but yeah, congratulations, yeah. mate. Awesome, mate. That's been a long time coming. For, um, it's yeah. good to see people like Mark and uh, Lee that have been around us for a little while now. And do you remember the time we um we saw Mark's video footage? Oh yeah, that was in Keswick. A, that was in a pub in Keswick. Yeah, random. What random... was the pub called? Was it called the Wainwright? Or the Wainwright. Yeah, the Wainwright. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was random. Which that was. Hey, it's Mark there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So look, looking forward to seeing lots of pictures of his back. Um, that's like Mark's signature move. It is, is, isn't it? He's, he's, he's that very, yes, it's, it's his signature pose. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I know it's like with signature poses. <laughs> A bit yeah, different than and mine. <laughs> that's not yours. What have I got? Um, I don't think I really have one, do I? That's a good point, actually. You need to come up with one. Yeah, right, that's your challenge for I'll next come, week. Yeah, I'll come you up need to one. bring it to the next Tuesday. I might tune in. Doff the cap. Yeah. Is that yours? Is it? Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. your signature. Um, but yeah, and, and whilst we're talking about Keswick, Good little segue. Yeah. Um, Keswick. Keswick. We are there in, I think it's like three weeks. Um, if anyone is around, just to sort of push out there that we'll be there. Um, we were uh, we're exhibiting again. We were there back in September. Um, it was delayed because of COVID last year, but May's kind of the, the normal time for that. So, yeah, if any of you guys are around. Um, <laughs> sorry, Karen has put something on there. And that's that's, that's a blade. Do me a favor and just uh, pull that one out. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that's now called the tube call tube cow pose yeah that's the tube so, yeah but that's see you later lads i'm on my way down <laughs> uh but mark uh great yeah it's been awesome can't thank you guys enough uh they are good guys aren't they they are good guys and porters yeah i'm um, glad you've had a good time enjoy the views uh safe trip back down if you do get to namche well actually it was probably be tomorrow tomorrow enjoy enjoy a beer um it's a nice it's a nice hike up there from Pangmoche. um but yeah going back to uh, what were we talking about before then? I really lost my thread. Keswick. Keswick. Keswick I knew I'd festival. find it. Keswick, hey. <laughs> Keswick. Um, yeah, really excited to go to Keswick, actually. It's always a good weekend. Yeah. Always, um, you know, we have seen uh, quite a lot of ever trackers who have, um, you know, gone there and done some of the events. They've got some good events, actually. If you're into trail running, they do heaps of that. But they do um, was it other. Abby? It was. Yeah, Abby there. We, we I think we caught up with Stuart. We caught up with Alan. Um, yeah, a lot of our trackers. Yeah, I reckon as many. In, yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be good, but I think as many of you should come up if you can, especially if you have a dog. Um, we're going to have dog biscuits. <laughs> we're going to have dog biscuits on the stand. Little bits of water for them, perhaps. Well, we did realise there were a lot of dogs there. It was time, mainly so that, it yeah. was mainly about the dogs for us. I'll be honest. We did talk about some trekking. The one dog who I remember, oh, I'd love it if his owner was watching. His name was Doctor Dynamo. He really? was. I think he was a Newfoundland. I'm going to find something. And he was about, he was about twenty stone. But they call him Dr. Dynamo because he sniffs out people's illnesses. And do you know what? I was a bad knee, didn't I? Oh, I remember that. And he was sniffing the Is knee. Is that why he got Because it was all inflamed and big and everything. And he was sniffing wow. my knee. He was massive. The biggest dog I've ever seen, Dr. Dynamo. Then there was little Jack Russell called Dave. Yep. Got a picture of him on the old Instagram. Dave with Dave. Um, yeah. yeah, just to answer... Um... Some question. Dave for Keswick. Joel, which is the 20th and 21st of May. Um, ah, Mick's off. Mick is off. Enjoy your peak. Enjoy your peak uh, climbing, mate. Um, I believe. Are, are you? Uh, I bet Mick's down in Benavan. I guarantee. He loves it. <laughs> no, he's going to be yeah, 20, uh, 21st and 22nd, I, I believe. Penny. Leah's going to come over from um, Australia. Actually, I hope, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd here be we great, go. Yeah. 20th to the 22nd of May. So it's that weekend. Um, We're there from the Thursday to the Sunday, although we're setting up on Thursday. 
Friday afternoon, I think it opens, and it's open then all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Yeah, I don't think Penson's going to be there, is she? No, she's not. No, it's, it's uh, unfortunately a lot going on with us. She's um, too, she's too, she's too, um, she's a, got a bit of energy. Uh, yeah. She'll want to run and chase things down. So, yeah, we'll, uh, and she looks like a bat. And she does look like a bat. Um, yeah, if you see a picture of Penny, think she of is, proof that. She is a funny little dog. For Halloween, we're going to get bat wings for her. <laughs> <laughs> Will Penny uh, has a good film of Charm Nest and brilliant. Wow, Andrew, that's niche. Um, but no, guys, look, anyway, we, we, we've covered off a lot today. Yeah. I think going back just a, you know, we've got a couple more minutes. Yeah, well, we've got bat dogs, um, horses. We've talked about horse horses, water. talked about snowboarding today. Yeah. Um, I think we, we have talked about trekking a little bit today. There was a little bit about um, trekking. There's a little bit of Maynard Bhutan's in there. Some environmentalism. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, on, on a serious note, it's great to talk about, you know, the environment and, and ways that we can we can work to, you know, to make it an impact. Um, certainly, uh, whilst we're out on trips, if not while we're living our daily lives, you know, and they're all small choices that we can we can kind of choose to do or choose not to do. Yeah. Um, but on our trips, you know, we want to at least try and insp- you know inspire you guys to to actually, um, okay, if there's a few things I can do whilst I'm on the trek that can help the area, then that's you know, I think we can uh, I think we can all agree that would be great for the environment. That would be yeah. great. For us as well um yeah and i think that's about it today yeah i'm happy with that any any final comments dave today no that's it that's no? um you ready to get your pose together for next yeah, week it... that, that that is their pose is it i don't know i don't know if I, I i don't always wear a hat i kind of feel like you should be so on if the I don't have, if i don't have a hat i'll have wow. to mime it disney prince hair yeah Mate, it's, it's good you got it's, product on it it's got yeah it's going back a bit isn't it Mate, it's strong you should uh you'd be having a ponytail soon nah those days are, those days are behind <laughs> me I've already been called a hell's angel, you know. I don't want to be called a, <laughs> a, 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 some crazy latter day dandy. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but no, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back um, next week, uh, another Tuesday. Tune in. Anything you need, though, guys, just drop us a message. Um, do drop us a message info at evertrek.co.uk or use the messenger on. <laughs> Look at Andy. That's brilliant because he's worth it. You are worth it, Dean. You're very <laughs> yeah. worth it, uh, but now have an awesome week, whatever yeah. you're up to. If you're out the mountains, stay safe. Um, don't forget as well, keep using the Vamoose app. Um, if you're using the Evertrek app, do get some pictures on there. It'd be great to see them. Um, but other than that, guys, we will see you next week. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. Adios. Good off the camera. Really warm. Now you can.